In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can take webcam video, capture it, and bring it into a project. Let's assume that we want to take the video that you see here. I put on track number two, where someone is working on their tablet, and we want to make the content of the tablet what we capture on our webcam. We'd like to show you how to do that. So first of all, we need to capture some elements through a camera. So we're going to click on the Capture button above the Media Room. When I click on that, it will open my screen where I have all my capture options. Now you notice at the top, at the center on the left side, we have lots of ways to capture data in PowerDirector. Most of mine are grayed out, as probably will be most of yours. You can actually capture from a digital TV signal, from a TV signal, from an HDV camcorder, or a DV camcorder. You can also capture from a CD. Now, I don't have any of these configured in my system, so they're all grayed out. But the four most common sources of capture are not, and they will probably will be for you too. You can capture from the screen, you can capture from an optical disc, a microphone, or our lesson today, a webcam. Now we need to change the default settings because the default settings are not what most of us will want to use. You notice the image here is 640 by 480. I have my webcam simply pointed out the window. And that indeed is what the profile says. But we'd like to change that. But before we change the profile settings by clicking on the profile button, we need to change the settings which deals with hardware. So we'll start by clicking on that. Now it's detected my webcam as the only video source. So what I like to do also is change some other things about it. We also have an audio source which again it defaulted to my webcam. I can click the down arrow here since I have more than one audio source and click another microphone. We're not going to use that but that's how you do it. If I had more than one video source, I would have the same drop-down available here, but I don't. So all I have is my webcam. But what I want to change for sure is the device resolution. The default is what most of us will not need anymore, 640 by 480. I'll click the down arrow, and it understands that with my particular piece of hardware, I have all these resolutions available. I'm going to pick something in the higher end, 1920 by 1080. Then I'll click on OK. So now my hardware is configured. You notice I've got a new shape, a new resolution in the window on the left. But my profile for this project is still 640 by 480. So after setting the hardware, I need to change the profile for this particular recording. I'll click on the button and then it gives me several options for recording. My default is H.264. Now, If I didn't want to use that, I could use MPEG-2, and then that would give me four different sub-options. Or I could click on AVI, and that would also give me options. In this case, I would have three. I'm going to leave it at H.264, which is probably the most common. But I do want to change this resolution here from 640, 480 to something larger. I'm going to use my 1920 by 1080. And I can use 24, 30, 60, or 120 frames per second, given what it knows about my hardware already. So I'm going to take the 60 frames per second, click on that, and then click on OK. So now my hardware and my profile are configured for recording. Before I record, there's some things it also tells me. It tells me where it's going to save it. Right now, this is the folder that I've picked. If I want to change it, I click on the button, and I can navigate to any other drive or folder I want to use. It also tells me, as it records, how much room it's taking up, how much room is free. It will give me the length of the video and the amount of time. Now, the amount of time is interesting because I can set this to record and then walk away and then it will automatically end the recording. That's what the buttons on the left side are for. I can set a time limit and the minimum is five seconds 
or a size limit, and the minimum is one megabyte, or both. And whenever it reaches the first of these two numbers, it will stop. Well, most people will pick time or size, and so I'm just going to click time. And then I'll take this and I'll call it 22 seconds. Now it will stop at 22 seconds. If I start it, and you start it by clicking on the red ball or holding the Alt key down and pressing the R key, if I start it, I can always stop it before it reaches either of these limits by clicking on the button again. Otherwise, if I do nothing, it will stop when it reaches whichever one of these I have activated. And so let's start it by clicking on the red button. And now it's recording the footage of the webcam through the window. We see the recorded length increase as it tends to grow. We also see the amount of megabytes being used in the recording inch up as it continues to process. Now, like I said, if I wanted to stop it before 22 seconds, I could click the button. I didn't, so it automatically shut it off on its own. Nice feature. So I need to name the file when it's done. We'll call this a test. If I want to preview it in this window, all I need to do is click on it, and it will give me a preview where I can see and hear. I have the audio off. So I put it back on for a second. You could hear it. And I can actually preview it full screen by clicking on this icon here. So this gives me a way in, in the capture screen to preview the video. I'm going to close it by clicking on the X in the upper right corner. And so when I'm done, all I need to do to get back to the edit mode is click on the edit button. And now I see not only my original video, I see my captured video, which is now available for me to use. And if I right click on it, and click on View Properties, I'll get to see all the features about the video. I see what my resolution is, my frame per second, my aspect ratio, when it was recorded, all key information, my sampling rate, my bit rate. I can take and drag and drop it and put it in my track number one. And now it appears as the content of the screen on the tablet. If I play this, we'll see the trees slightly moving as the fellow taps on the screen. But that's a very easy way to get webcam content into your project in CyberLink PowerDirector.